Welcome back to episode 132 of Cookies and Milk. Episode 132 Cookies and Milk. I'm, I'm your host Ben. I'm your host Sick William. Yeah, it's Sick William. Uh, it's the release date of Borderlands 1 Remastered. Yeah, this shit came out. We played it a little bit with our little sister. We're also having crumpled rainbow cookies and chocolate chip dunkers. Crumpled chocolate chip dunkers as well. It's fine. How are you, uh, the cookies are the... I haven't had the cookies yet. <laughs> Uh, but, I mean, Dunkers are whatever, and Rainbow Cookies are good, so I'm gonna call it fine preemptively. Fair. Uh, Borderlands 1 is fine. I mean, it sure is Borderlands 1. With just a, a, a twinge of update. Yeah, uh... It still feels as clunky... As it always was. If not more so after years of playing 2 and pre-sequel. Yeah. Uh, the minimap system, is it's funny because they added it in and it still feels incomplete. Well. Because the maps themselves are piss poor garbage. Because it's, it's the blandest colors over multi-layered structures. You yes. guys, you guys, I we when we went to battle Nine Toes... I walked in to, this, uh, to the place where we were supposed to go, and you guys did full laps around the whole place looking for the Just way lost in. lost as fuck, because it's so bland. Um, it doesn't get better. Yeah, you find another place, and it's just as bland. Because there's no, there's no green areas. There's no, like... There's no full desert areas. There's just arid badlands. Yeah. And then refineries that are defunct and full of baddies. Woo! Uh, there is the snow area at the end of the game. That's fun. Yeah, it's because it's white and easy to make a things change up. Change of pace. I'm sure there are things we are forgetting, but maybe we forgot them for a reason. Regardless, it's a really weird way how they did it because I pulled into GameStop because there was a GameStop right next to my school when I just finished a test, but it was like 10 a.m. and they had just opened. And I found out that the game was worth thirty five dollars. Yeah. And there was only like five copies delivered to the store. Jesus. I'm like, I was I was so confused by that. I mean, it's the same thing. The game was literally announced, and then it was like it's coming out next week. And then no, in like two days. Yeah. It like dropped immediately. It was a release trailer, and that was the only trailer. They weren't exactly confident in them, confident in it, and I can't blame them. Yeah, it really is just something to tide people over. But hey, it's coming out in September, mid September. So right, that's good. Uh, my least favorite release window. Yeah, we'll be in the middle. Of, also, have you learned about our our dad's? new love of the show what we do in the shadows does he I, besides just this now yeah cause he was he, he kept seeing the trailers for it yeah and he was like really liking what he was seeing and then he saw the movie and loved it <laughs> and now he's watching the show and he's loving it huh. so I'm glad somebody is it looks like a real isn't it isn't uh, the guy who made Thor Ragnarok uh Watiti I'm not gonna try and pronounce his name. That's fair. Uh, is it is he the director? That doesn't was he at least the director of the movie? I think he's. Let me check. Yeah. Yeah. So, I had a prediction for Borderlands Three. Yeah. So you're fighting against twins, correct? Yes. So I think how it's going to... I go with Waititi. Yeah. Yep. Is he the one of the show? He's the director. I think oh. he's also in the show. Oh, wow, okay. So... Yes, he's one of the housemates. That's fun. Here's my prediction for Borderlands 3. You're fighting twins. That's a... Where do you get that from? Where do you get that prediction from? That's pretty out there. I... Well... <laughs> I think mid-game, mid or maybe like a bit past mid-game, there's going to be a big fight. 
One of them dies. One of them dies. And I'm gonna think it's the brother. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's just gonna make the sister all the more dangerous, and I think she's going to kill Lilith. As soon... Kill it. She's gonna kill it. As soon as, uh... You guys take down her brother. Uh, and then... But then she flees. Uh, and then it gets a lot more dangerous and a lot more... Uh, end of Borderlands 2-esque. What if? I mean? What if? Taking a nod from all the uh, Borderlands uh, quests with split endings. Oh? You decide. Which sibling lives? Yeah. And then the remaining one kills Lilith. Oh, okay. Killeth. So, it's not like you decide how it ends. You decide, like, mid-game which one you kill. Yeah. It'd be fun if they took a page out of uh, Tales from the Borderlands in that regard. Yeah. And then no matter what decision you make, you get the same ending regardless. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, not exactly. So, the the culmination of all your choices in Tales of the Borderlands is who you take into the final battle. Yeah. So that's something. But yeah, yeah, that, that's a weird thing. That's a weird thing when I when we go when I go when my mind wanders back to Tales from the Borderlands, thinking about uh, what are their names? What are the girls' names? Uh. Fiona and... Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Man, it really sucks when uh, Tumblr only focuses on the, the men in the game. Mm -hmm. And I, I... Not Cleo. Regardless. Uh, Handsome Jack, that's the one you're talking about. Right, the, that duo. Is it Alex? It can't be Alex. Um, synopsis? Oh. Uh, Reese, Vaughn, Hugo, uh, Sasha. 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 And Fiona. Uh huh. So, those two, they're adopted dead. The choice you get to, like. Kill him or not? Shoot him or yeah. not when the box explodes? Yeah. I don't understand that at all. How would he survive it if you didn't shoot him? Yeah, seriously. What choice do you make differently that lets him be alive? Because it can't be the shooting, right? Maybe, maybe he doesn't... No, because the thing is, you shoot him. Yeah. And then he opens the box when he's dying. Right, but he would have opened the, he would have opened the box anyway. Eventually. Oh, he would have gotten away? Yeah, he was running away. He wasn't opening the box. Huh. I guess that, I guess that makes sense then. Uh, I also hear Gordis is coming back. How about that, huh? Hell yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> 100%. I gotta get those. We gotta get Gordis. We gotta get Loaderbot. Honestly, I could give a take everybody else. You don't like? Negligible. That's fine. Uh, but, uh... Gordis and Loaderbot. The robots are very well written in the Borderlands series. Non-negotiable. I mean, they absolutely have to be back. I, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I want to see what happens. I want to see what's up with Reese. I want to see what's up with Fiona. I want to see what's up with everybody. I want to see what's up with the whole cast. Um, I want to get maybe, like, uh, a nice moment with uh, Fiona and Ellie. Wait, what? Because, uh... Scooter's dead. Oh, right, right. But, uh, yeah. I don't think we're gonna get that. I know, I don't think so either. I do think, uh... I don't know why I... I don't know where I heard that, uh... They weren't going to use the assets or characters from Tails at yeah. all. Made me sad for a long time. Made me sad for a w real long time. Uh, but now absolutely, I'm... I'm so jazzed to know they're back. So... Uh, 
who do you think all is going to die at the end of Borderlands 3? Um, let's start with the obvious ones. Uh, Tiny Tina. Uh, 100%. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lilith. Mordecai's second bird. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Gage's robot, Death Trap. Gage isn't in the game. But Death Trap is. Right. Well, I guess... It, let's let's jump back. Let's go pre Borderlands three trailer launch. Oh, I know a dark time. God, I can't believe they cut out Tales of the Borderlands. Oh, so sad. Well, who do you think would be crazier to put in, Lady Aurelia Hammerlock or Gage? Gage. Really? Yeah. Why? Lady Aurelia Hammerlock's got a uh, tie into the other characters from the game. Like, we know who Hammerlock is. Hammerlock's in the game. True. Lady Hammerlock's probably in the game. I suppose. So Gage really has no uh, bearing on the plot, just like Krieg? I don't, none of them really have a bearing on the plot. Maya probably does. Sirens have bearing on the plot. They like yeah. Sirens. Of, yeah, I would say that Borderlands like Sirens. So do you think... Uh, so let's jump back. Uh, post trailer. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Wonderful time. Uh. Do you think Axton and Salvador will be in the game? Yeah. Do you think their roles will be good or what do you think? Evil. They'll be evil. They'll be working for the bad guys. Cause they just got hired. Mm -hmm. You have to fight them. Yeah. That's kind of weird, right? That they're mercenaries. That they're mercenaries. The just highest bidder type deal. I absolutely think so. Uh, I think if Jack just offered the Vault Hunters a vast sum of money... He does, though. When? To kill yourself. That's too late in the <laughs> game. At that point, everything is personal. So, Except for, for Zero, probably. So, uh, had they walked... Why is it personal? You bond with people you're under fire with. Sure. Uh... So you're implying that... Uh, also, they give you a bed to sleep in. I don't think... So, Vault Hunters, right? They're Vault Hunters. Yeah. That's their official description. When they get on that train to go hunt the vault and Jack tries to kill them... Yeah. He does this because... He's scared. Uh, by definition of their jobs, no amount of money is going to make them turn away. That's fair. You, you're not going to pass up a vault. That's fair, yeah. So do you think uh, the whole concept of vaults are going to be... Scrapped? No more vaults? No, that's, no not, more what I, that's not what I meant. <laughs> are you going to feel bad? Uh, no, what am I saying? Are they going to feel worse because like, you're going to multiple locations like for a bunch of different vaults? Like That's the whole concept. Uh, I think we're getting beyond that. Yeah. Or, no, so, uh, I think about it in the DLCs and stuff. Because you kept finding vaults in DLCs. It was just like, oh, shit, there was a vault here the whole time. One vault. One vault? What other vault, other than, uh, the Lady Scarlet? Were there no more vaults? Where would they be? What were the other vaults? I can't remember. I felt like we were finding them every other DLC. Lady Scarlet? We didn't uh, beat the one hammer-like DLC. The wildlife? Yeah, we did. Oh, we did, didn't we? Yeah, we went back and because did Because it. it was, a uh, We were just killing the Nakama? Dude. Yeah. Yeah, he just falls down the stairs and dies immediately? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, because he does his introduction, then trips, and his health bar just... Duh, duh, duh. Right. And then we get the last shot on him, and that's it? And then there's a second boss fight, I think. Yeah, probably. Yeah, no, Captain Scarlet's the only one that's, uh... Huh. Still, though. Also, let's talk about... Let's... Okay, real quick, let's rank those. Let's rank the four big expansions for Borderlands 2. I gotta be honest, I do not remember them. There was Lady Scarlet. I'll refresh your memory real quick. Lady Scarlet, okay. Treasure Hunting. Yeah. Uh, Hammerlocks, Wildlife Reserve. Oh. Uh. Torg. Torg Tournament. Remember that one? Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah. And then, uh,. Uh, bunkers and badasses. 
All right, Bunker's Badass is number one. Number one, one hundred percent, because it's the biggest one that has any relevance to the plot. It's all yeah. It's got some great character moments in it. Oh, one hundred percent. I love. I uh, like pre sequel does it as well. Yeah, but Bunker's and Badass is with the uh, Mordecai Lilith and Brick commenting and talking and to talking uh, to the speaker. Yeah, very and, good. And then there's the uh, Tiny Tina. Uh, whole character arc there. Yeah, that's uh, it really makes her character. Yeah, it like I spent the whole game really not liking Tiny Tina, and then I got to there and I was like, damn. What's number two? Um, uh, is it the Torg one? It's the Torg one, and then Scarlet, and then Hammerlock, and then Hammerlock. I wish, I I really wish Scarlet's, uh. Uh, th- locale yeah. was switched with the hammerlock. Yes. Because I... The only reason Scarlet wins out against the hammerlock DLC is because of the story and the characters. Those are better than the hammerlock ones. Yeah, uh, the one dude who has all the voices, does the voices of the entire town. Shade. Yeah. Does Shade die in pre-sequel? No, not, under, not pre-sequel. Tales? And, uh, Tales? He's just there for a bit, and he scares me. Yeah, he does the weird jump scare bit in the very beginning of the game. Where he's gone from the display when you walk past. Ugh, God, I hate it. But, yes, Scarlet, Shade, uh, all of of those characters, very fun. Uh, I hate traversing the, the, the desert lake bed is the worst part, I guess. And that's most of it. It's a lot of it. <coughs> but, like, going in caves, going in the lighthouse, those are fun. Those are fine. Yeah. Beating gi- by a giant worm, I believe that was a thing that happened. That was fun. Probably. And you fought a rock hive in there. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, you fight her pet. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, and how there's no big, like, cliché or anything. Or they play on the ki- cliché of being betrayed by the other pirate. Yeah, heart. it's like a bit the it's, whole time. It's fun. And, uh, yeah, Hammerlock, number four. Sucks. It's very not memorable. That's literally the whole thing about it, is that it's so... I remember how much I disliked the vehicle and the traversing the wetlands and the... But uh, it... <sighs> I feel like it could have been done better, but it looked kind of fun. It looked, the world, the location looked fun. Yeah, when you, like, just look at it on its face, you're like, oh, that's new. It's a giant underground forest, uh, river bed type thing. Now, the Headhunters DLCs, remember that? Yes, the head, they were just, like, character. There were things. nine, uh, and... You, were there nine of them? Thanksgiving... Mercenary Day. Uh, the the marriage Valentine's Day. That was Valentine's Day because it was marriage. marriage. Yeah. Uh, or no. That was a yes. One. yes. 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 Uh, St. Patty's Day. Was it only? It was, it was Halloween. Halloween. Halloween was good. Halloween was a great one. So that was that's five. I think there were five, right? I think there was a. There's the crawfish one. There's the island beach vacation. Ooh, beach vacation. Beach vacation was a great one. Beach vacation was real good. Because beach vacation was the one where Mordecai had his new bird. Yes. Then it kept biting Lilith. Yeah. Uh, so that's six. I believe it was six. I feel like there was a seventh one. I feel like five and then that sixth final one. It sounds like, uh, sounds pretty right. There's a there's so many there's so much DLC for Borderlands Two. Yeah. It's crazy, and it's kind of sad that uh, Borderlands uh, Borderlands One got more uh, DLC treatment than the pre sequel. Yeah, really. Like it got one huge one, which I really liked. Very big, yeah. Uh, Claptastic Voyage probably hits number one of all my DLCs for all of them. It probably beats out Function of Badasses. I don't know. I feel like Bunkers of Badasses was longer. Uh, it, also, Claptastic Voyage did a really 
peculiar thing of uh, <laughs> explaining uh, everything of... I mean, I guess it's, that's the fun part of it. It explains everything, why everything's wrong with Claptrap. Yeah. And, and you do a lot of it. You do a lot of it. Uh, Captain Scarlet, uh, Taurus Campaign of Carnage, Hamlock's Big Game Hunt, Assault on Dragon Keep, Henrik Pegs, Tiki Baha's Bloody Harvest, The Horrible Hunger of the Ravenous Wild Gobbler, How Marcus Saved a Mercenary Day, uh, Hammerlock and the Son of the Cromorax. Two, three, four. That's only four Headhunter bags. What? That can't be right. Yeah. Uh, so there's the Tropical Island theme pack, uh, Christmas theme pack, uh, Hunger Games style. That's the... And then the Headhunter pack. But there was the marriage one too, right? Yeah. And St. Patty's Day. Oh. Huh? Did you start peak collector's edition? Oh, did you start peak? Right. I don't know if that really counts. That doesn't really count. Borderlands two. Headhunter. Um. Three bucks is pretty good, all things considered. For the whole thing. For the each headhunter pack. Yeah, Mad Moxie and the Wedding Day Massacre. Yeah. And then Son of Cromorax. But that's it. Huh. So five? Yeah. But where was... Oh! St. Patty's Day and the Valentine's Day one. Is the Valentine's Day one. Yeah. So that's five? Five. So let's rank them. All right, sure. Uh, From what I remember, so let's go... uh, Cromorax best. Yeah. Uh, Bloody Harvest, uh, Mercenary Day. You think Bloody Harvest was uh, second best? I feel it kind of bled together. Uh, yeah, it does really uh, sort of linger for a second. What would you put as number two then? I kind of want to go with. Uh, I kind of want to go with uh, St. Patty's Day. The Wedding Day Massacre? I I remember liking it a lot. I remember having a good time with all of them. And that's, I think, the best part about the Headhunter packs. Absolutely. Is that, like, with the exception, maybe, of the Wild Gobbler? You didn't like it? I, I, don't, I wouldn't say I didn't like it. So, I guess here's the problem with the Wild Gobbler one, is we already had a, a very Torg-centric DLC pack. Yeah. Uh, like, that was the whole thing. I'm not sure if we really needed uh, another Torg-centric one where we watch him lose his company. Yeah. It's, uh... The thing about or that wait, one... Wait, wait. Is it, is it a setup to Tor's campaign of Carnage? I don't think so. That it, can't be right. It ends with his grandma talking about stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's... The thing about it... Uh, about a hit under Rex is that they really didn't overstay their welcome. Right. Uh, some of them went pretty long, but then they all, like, ended... Just as I was feeling like, eh, I'm sort of getting tired of this. Like they gave you a, a raid boss, and that was, and at the end, of, at the end of the day, they gave you like five day quests. Yeah, it's literally just like, hey, new area to explore, new guns. It's really nice. Come back in, do some stuff. Because uh, there's some secrets and stuff. Find the unique bosses and stuff in every area. I mean, there's the. I know uh, Marks is. Marcus Saves Mercenary Day is a very good place for loot farming. Yeah, of course. Because you kill the snow... You can go back and kill the big snowman boss, and then you go back out, and the train pulls up with a bunch of loot all the time. Yeah. And it's literally just like, alright, let's get stacked. Yeah, really. What was the DLC pack in Borderlands that we got caught up on? Claptrap, psst, Claptrap Revolution. Yep. Because it was the last one you're supposed to do and we did it first. Oh, boy. Yeah, right. That's We were like, the way we looked at it because we were, we were young kids, is like, oh, we, we don't care about the other three DLC packs. We just want to do Claptrap's Revolution, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's because the other ones were fucking boring. There was like... Uh, so the worst part, no holds barred. Worst part about any Borderlands game is the arenas, like they're just parts where it's like, hey, we lock you in, and there's waves. Borderlands, like at the end of our Borderlands two playthroughs, it was just like, hey, here's our quest menu. 
the only ones we haven't done are the arena, failed, arena, 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 the, the arena, failed arena. arena things that we can't beat. Like, and like, if we sat down and like really tried to do it, maybe. I don't want to. Yeah. It's not fun. Flame Rock Refuge is supposed to be the last one you complete, right? Like, that's the last one in the story? I mean, Bunkers and Badass. Yeah, so Flame Rock like... Refuge is just... Yeah, I, uh... It's the... It's sort of unquestionably the end of the game. Yeah. Uh... So, Borderlands got the Zombie Island of Dr. Ned... Uh, Moxie's Underdome Riot, the Secret Armory of General Knox, and uh, Claptrap's new Robot Revolution. So, here's the thing about all of that. Uh, I guess you don't really need to know about... You don't need to get the DLCs to know stuff, but General Knox's Secret Armory has straight-up Athena in it. Oh, yeah. Athena is introduced as a character in the third DLC pack. That's weird. Yeah, so, and Dr. Ned's Zombie Island, I guess they went really hard on the first one, just, like, introducing something like that, but it's probably just as dark and gloomy looking as, but worse than uh, T.K. Baja's Bloody Harvest. Yeah, I also, second thing, the last thing I need is an island to be harder to navigate because it's dark. Yeah. It's not fun. No. That's been the thing going back into it. So, uh, the game started me, Borderlands 1 started me with two golden weapons that are just, like, real high explosive damage. Right. So and I, I had a revolver that literally just one-shot any enemy I looked at up until, like, level 3 or 4. Right. And even then they were a good thing to have. Yeah. And they also started you with 75 golden keys. Yeah. So, compare that to me and, uh... Ben and I's little sister starting out right beside him, and I have a garbage level one sniper rifle, no golden keys, and Isabel's got the same, except she has a submachine gun, and that's it. And then you're here, uh, carving a path for the first Literally just... for the first five to six levels. I I believe I caught up to you around level seven, but even then. I'm still playing catch up, and I think I always will. Yeah. And it feels real weird that that's how things started. It felt like the, uh, especially since I was the one that bought the game, <laughs> the run of pre sequel where you were Lady Hammerlock, and I started with a rare gun. Yeah, they just start in a bunch of cash. In a bunch of cash. It's just like, oh, so Lady Hammerlock and Gage are the same. They are the same. They're the easy mode. They're the easy mode of starting Borderlands because you start with Gage. Death Trap is so fucking good. Yeah, literally. He's not like he's not like Wolf and Saint. He's not like the turrets that have like fun little gimmicks about them. He's just a guy that runs around the the, the place and kills people. He goes up to enemies <laughs> and kills them. And it's like Ah Her stacks of anarchy are fun though. So that's what I really like about Gage, is that, like, you look at that and it's like, oh, so this is, like, sort of the easy mode. But then you get to Anarchy Stacks, and you're like, holy shit, this character's awesome. Uh, and it's fun that you don't even have to play it like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm playing now, I, I started a, Wil a Wilhelm playthrough on the pre-sequel because of that Borderlands hype. And I'm gonna go into the Red Tree, that's just, uh, a different cybernetics tree than the blue one that I went in on. Oh, yeah. So his, uh, his, like, mid-tier thing that he unlocks in that is he, he turns into, like, a, a walking, uh, killer robot oh. when he goes into Fight for Your Life with, like, reduced walk speed and stuff, and that when he runs out of health, he blows up. Hmm. Uh, so it's kind of like Krieg's thing at the end. Yeah. Krieg's a uh, double XP off the grenade drop at the end. Oh, God. Especially because it's your grenade, and Sorry. when we just started using the fireworks grenade. Oh, God. And you didn't have to worry about throwing it up. Yeah. It just stayed there and then blew up. Oh, boy. Man, the... It scaled. <laughs> it really did. The fucking... Man, all things considered, though, pre-sequel is just so good. I am thinking about... Uh, so... Going through it again, 
after a long time, it doesn't fix any of the problems that are the startup of it. Yeah. Because it probably has, the, strangely enough, the slowest start of any Borderlands game. It's got a lot of hand-holding to it. It has a lot of hand-holding for a short game. Uh, like, the first... Oh, God. The Hyperion Moon Base. Escaping from there is fun. It's uh, action-packed. You're fighting off the Lost Legion. Uh, and then you get moonshot down to the Janie tutorial. Oh, boy. Janie as a character, she's fine. She's uh, fun, but any character saddled with tutorials yeah. immediately gets this side eye from me. It's the same thing about Hammerlock and too. It's the same thing about Hammerlock. It's the same thing about Claptrap. Uh, you feel bad to see it happen, but it happens. Like. JD tells you all these things, walks you through the fun uh, stuff to do with uh, Digistruct Keys, killing... Go get your O2, get your shield. Go get O2, go get... You get your shield early in oh, from good. Jack. But, oh, I just remembered. The worst thing happened to me in the fight where you uh, get Jack. Yeah. Where it's like you, you gotta protect Jack... Well, when he gets punished when you first meet him. Yeah. One enemy spawned in with a fire gun. And that's before I get my shield. Oh, so you're just taking fire damage. So, they shoot me three times, and my shield... And my health is dropping so fast, and they have another guy. And I am Wilhelm, and I have a... Garbage doll pistol, and a garbage Hyperion shotgun. And I want to fight for my life, and these guys are backing up. I can't hit them properly with my gun, and I can't shoot them with my shotgun. Jesus Christ. And I'm like, I can't do anything here. I just gotta get lucky that I kill one of them before I go in. I think I did three times. Oh before. my god. Yeah. And it's hard to do anything, because it's like, I walk in to the, to the area, and they're just sitting in, like, the left uh, divot right there, uh... Like, it's like the raised platform, and they're on one side of the raised platform. And I walk into the room, and they have access to me immediately. Jesus. I try to shoot them a bit. My health's already going down. Of course. And you're not, you don't have a lot of health at all. And then your fire damage is bad damage. It was a real motivation killer, for yeah. sure. I can't believe you didn't just stop there. Like, you died once, and we're like, eh. Well, I'll be honest with you. I got to deadlift. I killed a deadlift. I... Didn't mean it. I, I'm sorry, jump at. I didn't mean it. He's fine. <laughs> so, beat deadlift. Got that one last will and testament of uh, Captain Tom... Thorsten or whatever. You remember that one? Yeah. Where you have to uh, go kill the guy who does it. You gotta let Colonel Zarpadon know. Oh, yeah. Then you gotta go call Nap a, a dick or whatever. Yeah. And then I got uh, the car, went back to Janie, did that whole thing, and that's where I edited it there. I'm like, I'm good not to pick this up. Yeah. I, I'm fine not picking this up for a little while after this. Or ever again. Because I don't need to go through the uh, Borderlands pre-sequel storyline alone. Yeah. Because uh, it always feels wrong playing it alone. I did it with Zero. Uh, because I watched a guy do a bunch of fun Zero strats. And I'm like, oh, I really want to do that, actually. Yeah. And I just ran a sniper class Zero. And it, got, it was real fun. But... Then I got into DLC. I don't want to do that, really. <laughs> yeah. Did you beat the full game? I I beat Handsome Jack, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. I'm, I'm only at level 37. I was like, fucking, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, that's the, uh... 
I mean, number one, I just literally do not have to have, but number two, it's just like, yeah, Borderlands is a game I play with other people. Yeah. It's, there definitely is a single player campaign. It also explains why we couldn't beat most of the fucking raid bosses. Because it's just like, oh wow, look how easy it is. That being said, that's scaled down for, uh... One player. One player, yeah. Yeah, a, a player who can manipulate, like, uh, damage strats or whatever. Yeah, maximizing your, uh... Do so much bore with one hit. Uh... You know bore? You hit multiple targets with one bullet. Oh, yeah. So you just, like, scope up on one enemy and hit a lucky bore, and it just, like, the, the sound of it hitting the uh, spot, like, quintuples, like... Like, you hear it hitting the same spot multiple times, uh, and then they're just dead. Oh. Like, that happens to Bunker because he's, uh, well, it's like his face is made out of crit spots. Oh, so if so you So just... you shoot one, you're shooting them all. Uh, one of my favorite, uh, videos I ever watched was, uh, an Axton Tedior setup. Ooh. Where it's like you max out on his reload speed. And then, like, uh, his, like, the the first bullet from each gun deals, like, a bunch more damage. And then you throw the full mag. And then you just hurl the full mag at them. And you just walk up to a raid boss and you go, shoot throw, shoot throw, shoot throw, shoot throw, shoot throw, and you just, they die. And it's That's like... very fun. Oh. Just like that, huh? Just like that. We can't fight any raid boss. <laughs> yeah. We gotta do coward strats if we want to do any of them. Yeah, run and hide and throw turrets. Uh, that's I mean that's my current strats in this point in Borderlands One. I was like, oh man, I'd love to go into this uh, bullet damage and turret damage tree. Fuck that! You gotta go support again. Gotta go support, especially now there's three of us. Uh yeah, one hundred percent. Uh, is that a place to end it off? We're bad at Borderlands. Yeah, I think that's probably a fair point. Uh. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, the cookies were okay. They were fine. They were fine. And Just like I said. And hopefully I'm not sick when we record again. Mm. Uh, bye, guys.